Ah, 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 this is so funny. It's Monday morning, and I'm in the yard. And so is the train. Let's get it offloaded. Watching the train offload, I always think to myself, when I see the L860 and the shovels working, how long is left till it gets paid off? That L860 is eight grand a month for five years, and we are past halfway, which I'm very happy about. And as those bits of kit are very specialist, they're never mass produced, so they hold their money quite well. But it raised a point, which I've discussed last week with a friend of mine, about growing businesses and being afraid of debt. Now, there was many a year when I was running older lorries when I just started, I didn't want to get into any debt. However, the needs of the business couldn't be met with my financial resources. And sometimes you've got a choice. You can get there, but it's going to take you many a year, maybe a hundred years. And I am not second or third or even fourth generation. So the money's got to come from somewhere. And I had to develop my understanding of business valuations. Because I always thought growing up, you think, well, if I've got everything in my business and all the lorries are paid off and I just operate and make a profit, this will make the business more valuable, which is correct. But the way businesses are really valued, they look at your profit based on your turnover and how much that is. So if you have a business which is turning over 100,000 a year and you're making... £20,000 in profit after everything, that's great. That's 20%. However, if you can borrow money and make a £100,000 business into a million pound business, you may not be at 20%. You may move down to 16 or 17%. However, 16 or 17% of a million is a lot more than 20% of 100,000. If you can manage to generate the revenue to pay them back, you can accelerate the growth of your business. Debt is a very strange thing. My mentality comes from, my mum would always say with the flat when we were growing up, you gotta pay off the mortgage, you gotta pay off the mortgage. My family a St. Lucian and what's been instilled as me is you need land and you have land paid off, you have land as a backup. But going out into the world, I've kind of have to learn and change my view that sometimes you have to acquire debt in order to accelerate the growth of your business and push on and raise the value of your business. You can wait, but that might take 100 years, or you can borrow money, manage your finances properly, and what would have taken 100 years will now take 10 years. And that's my two pence worth. I've got a quick meeting at the yard, and then I'm heading to Scania for a meeting on new lorries. And of course, more finance and debt. Run about 10 minutes late for my meeting at Scania. Hopefully this is a fruitful one at the refurbishment project. We carry on with the work. I can't actually visit the site this week, but we know what we're doing and the boys have plenty to be getting on with. In the master bedroom, we're boarding up using 15 mil soundboard. The main areas are all done. It's just the very small intricate areas that need to be complete. We're using timber and ply to build the area up and create a recess for the curtains and blinds. Okay, so you're on the way to go and collect one now, yeah? All right, see you in a bit. This morning, Ben went to collect an eight ton machine. But then it's not too he brought that back to the yard and now he's leaving the yard again. He's going to Manny from Elite Pave. He's going down to his job to collect a machine from there now also.
and then we're gonna ask all of the questions. So if you add this to the RFI, this is personal preference as much as anything. Dudek is closing today the master bedroom, ceilings, everything. Okay. And then he was planning to do like 600 mil ceiling around the dressing area. Okay. So he can finish the walls, you know? The carpet was like ordered today. So yeah. I spoke with the guys, I'm, I'm hoping to get them like in the next couple of days. Hopefully. Okay, sounds good. David just called me from the refurbishment project. When you leave the master bedroom and you head into the ensuite, you have the ensuite on your left and you have the dressing room on your right. Now we're trying to work out where we should put the switch for the dressing room because we don't want to confuse the client. You know when you walk into a room and you touch the wrong light, it's just well annoying then you gotta look for the other one. We have two options. It can either be next to the switch for the bathroom or it can be on the other wall of the built-in cabinetry. The documentation we're preparing for the client which which is gonna have all the answers which we need. We're just gonna slip this into the document as well and let them make the decision. The time is 6, 11. I'm just chatting with Terry and he's put a movement order in because Ben has to collect a container for us on Wednesday, which is three meters by four meters, but because it's three meters wide, anything over 2.9 needs a movement order. And then, <laughs> The office let me know we had an order come through from Aggregate Supplier. I'm doing a bit of Google AdWords because I'm trying to push the sales of the gray plum and blue slate. More traffic's coming through and we happen to sell 10 mil red granite. What we don't have in stock yet. <laughs> What's all the way in Scotland? Click here to watch the weekly when I went up to Scotland to have a look at it. Tomorrow morning, Jules will go back to the client and say, apologies, not in stock at the moment. We can offer you a plum, gray or blue slate, or we can refund you the difference. And that's it for Monday. What are you doing? What's going on? You don't really call me no more, so I'm just seeing how you are. I don't call you all the time. I tell Foxy I'll call you. You tell for... If you tell Foxy you call me, that don't mean that you call me. He's my new best mate. Yeah, he doesn't like you anymore, does he? Yeah, I know. You lot have mugged me off properly. He's, uh, you, you two have become pals and left me out in the cold. You've probably been seeing each other without me even knowing or whatever, so... Yeah, he comes down, he flies down every weekend. We go for Sunday lunch. If you and your pal Foxy fancy inviting me anywhere again, let me know. All right, then I'll let him know. All right, great. Thank you. All right, mate. Bye. All right, bye. It's Tuesday morning. Nearly in the yard. Just called to see how Michael O'Donovan was doing. Him and Foxy have become great pals and they left me out of it. So, kind of got left in the cold. I'm meant to be jumping back in a chopper tomorrow morning. Foxy's coming to collect me from Denham because we have a day of meetings up and down the country. But that is, of course, weather permitting because safety comes first. Nearly at the yard. Time now is 5.53 p.m. While some of the day went well, other parts of the day not so well. I had a day when a lot of meetings were canceled or moved back and said, oh, we can't make it. Those meetings are in a sequence which I planned other meetings in days to come. So now I have to go back to all of those people and change it and it just pushes the progress back even further. I understand people are busy and I understand everyone has different priorities, but when you're pushing forward here, but over here, they're intertwined and they're part of a bigger plan. When one cog goes out of sync, it throws the whole thing into disarray and then you need to sit there and spend days or even a week going back and forth trying to match up people's diaries between annual leave and trips and uh, just... But I'm not complaining. There's not really a lot I can do. It happens, it's life. I could take my toys and throw my toys out the pram, but what good will that do? I just decide when all of that goes wrong, I just find something that I am in control of because I know that I will not let me down and I just work on that. So I've got an email from David who's at a refurbishment project and we're talking about a small shed that's gonna be on the side of the house. We're trying to have this in keeping with the rest of the house so it all matches up and it looks like a very miniature version. But 
There's a tree just behind it and David is worried about the services running in front of it. I've had a look at all the parameters and I've said to David that where we believe the services are running, that's running to the pool house. All the area there, all the slabs need to be redone. So we're gonna take all of that out anyway. It is unknown what's in the ground, but more than likely we will upgrade it anyway because the current system in the pool house isn't up to scratch. And if we can put a bigger water pipe in coming from the road, it will increase the flow per minute it and we may need a larger gas pipe so that I'm not worried about. The tree is very close. It's a very old tree that looks like it's dying. However, it's on the other side of the fence. Now, I don't want to go be upsetting the neighbor for them to say that you killed my tree. So we're going to have to find another way to design this building. Now, the majority of it, we were thinking of brick, but now I'm thinking let's have bigger transparent panels. So even if we just have some brick pillars and then we build the roof structure out of a uh, the treated timber that should keep the weight down instead of bricking all around it and then the final problem is the space what david's saying is if you put this shed there it means that the space to get past is about 1.1 to 1.2 meters now while that seems pretty tight it all depends what someone's priority is and how they want to live and if it's important to the client and that's what they want there. And we think it's a small distance as long as it passes building regs, as long as it's not against any planning laws, you gotta give the client what they want. So I'm just drafting a response to go to David. There's no point sending it to him now and I don't want it to be far into his inbox. So I'm gonna schedule this to land in David's inbox at 7 a.m. And my computer's gone to sleep. Nice. Oh, that's my good shoulder as well, man. Oh. So this is a sofa bed mm -hmm. over there for three people. Yeah. And then two like armchairs. Four and a half meters, and that's the back of the sofa. And that, and that's a big deep sofa where people can just chill out and lie down. Yeah. The seating that you're talking about here, does it need to be raised or no? Seating position is around 10 to 15 centimeters higher on this chairs, arm chairs. On these uh, chairs, yeah? Just the difference on the seating position. Ah, uh, the seating and position, then, so we don't need to raise the level like we did at yeah, basement salvage. We think Click we here to watch that video. With the two chairs or the single chair that's going to be here, these arm chairs, mm -hmm. if I'm sitting on it, your head, it doesn't affect the, the sight of the projector? No. No, the projector will be with, uh, within the it's coffered cool. ceiling. We're gonna run this string <laughs> to show the line of the projector. Aha, uh -huh, I get it. All right. Yeah, Cinema. Ah, ha, 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 ha. This is so funny. Even your, your hands will not affect it. This is more of a bed yeah. than a sofa. I would be here then, wouldn't I? No, even lower. Yeah, I know, I'm gonna be laying down, but boy, this, I know I'm not the cleanest of people, but I don't really wanna be lying down in this. At that rate, it's fine. Wednesday morning, I'm at the refurbishment project. As I said last night, my meetings got cancelled, so I thought, why not just come to site this morning and go through all these emails that we're talking about with David. We're trying to work out in the cinema area, based on the projector and the size of the screen, what we can do with the seats. Now, originally, we looked at having a raised level. Here, we'll be lying down, so I'll be significantly lower, or we may need to adjust the size of the actual screen a tiny bit but we're trying to work within the space here to give the maximum size screen we can taking into account the seating arrangements but this is the only way to really do it as opposed to going back and forth on emails and phone calls that's a tree that i was talking about yesterday so we think that tree's roots may interfere with the foundation of this P possibly what if we try to make this structure as light as possible so it's got to look like a smaller version of the house yeah mm -hmm. what if we had four pads just for brick pillars, which the structure of the roof could sit on. We changed it to a flat roof. Both sides, we could just have a fixed pane. At the back, treated timber, put some chicken wire on. Not that anyone will ever see the back of it. We'll build it in that way because we don't want the foundations to interfere with the tree, but we still need to make it look like the house. Instead of an excavated 600 buildup of hardcore slab bricks all the way around, we have made a plan for this outdoor shed. And it means that we're not gonna be interfering with the neighbor's tree or causing any damage. What on earth is that? A master bathroom. What size is it? 
three by one, but we're cutting them to 2.5, whatever, 2.4. Are they all here for the master? Yes, some of them are outside, and these are all for master. So when we finish with, all, with our first fix and we begin to build our walls, we can start to tile the master on suite? Yeah. Good. The master bathroom, I can order so I can fix because they were happy with the finishes and everything yeah. as per the design, so I can order it, yes. Well, we'll see what happens because if we can push on in an area, we need to. Yeah. yeah. But the rest, yeah. I need to confirm. Okay, fine. All right. All right. Yeah, but master bedroom is all fully bolted, so you okay. can see. Let's have a look. You'll notice in the vaulted ceiling, we have the blue plasterboard, which is sound. We also have it here because on the other side of this, we have the soundproof loft area. Feels completely different in here now, it's boarded up. We are still not 100% on the electric what's gonna be here. We ran both options just in case. Hey, we've got a chandelier here, which will sit above the bed and hang in this area. And then if you look on the side here, we'll have two smaller ones to match hanging above the bedsides. We've run the cables over here for the strip LED lighting, free here, free here. We haven't done anything here because if they do go with that option and you're lying in your bed, you don't want them free, those free lights right in your face. In the past weeks, I was showing you the other rooms and the area we created so curtains and blinds could be attached later. Well here you can see it not fully built up yet and you can see the ply that actually goes behind it. And then the plasterboard goes on top of this before we close it up and then all the blind motors and when the blinds are rolled up, it hides behind this recess. Out of the shower mixer, we've gone from 22 to 15 mil. And then the 15 mil goes here and the 15 mil connects to the shower head and you can actually drop the shower head down for servicing yeah. and repairs. This shower area is gonna be epic. We've got our three options here. And thankfully, we have a 300 litre mega flow. Have we got one or two? Oh, we actually got two mega flows. 600 litres going here. Yeah. See? There you go. They're definitely not going to run out of water. Now, I'm heading back to the yard. I mentioned weeks and weeks back my quest to create clean, purified drinking water. And by that, I don't mean putting it through one of those little filters. I mean actually removing the contaminants from it. And I got quite obsessed. Lots of you made comments and actually researched some of the ideas that you put forward. And I have purchased myself a reverse osmosis machine. And I've also purchased myself one of these stainless steel water filters with these stones in it. I don't know what it is. I'm going to be installing this reverse osmosis machine, but I have to take out something else in my kitchen to fit it. But when I do that, it's going to create more space. And I just realized that I can fit a warming drawer there. Not that I've got anything to warm on the warming drawer, but it just looks good, doesn't it? Like it looks like you have a functional kitchen. That work around my reverse osmosis is gonna be a separate video because I'm gonna go into talking about the contaminants that were found in the tap water, how tap water is processed, and once I put the reverse osmosis in, the difference it's made. If it's made a difference at all, because I could do all of that and then just be wasting my time. But the proof will be in the pudding, as they say, today. Ben is collecting one of our new offices, the one that Terry put the movement order in for on Monday. Yep. Just pulling back in the yard. Ben's arrived, the container office. And we have a cement delivery, What's just finished, is offloading. We've got a volumetric loading, and we've got a train that's due to be here in a couple of minutes. All fun and games. What, the train? train yeah. So we haven't got long. Yeah. Hello, Ollie. Oh, is he waiting to leave, yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, he was sort of hanging about like a bad smell. We're trying to get him to leave. Time to take a look around. I mean, didn't realize we inherited all the stuff that's in it. It's watertight, no leaks anywhere. 
Shell of it is good. Got a window over there, which will let in some natural light. It is wired up for electrics, which we could connect to, but we're gonna refurbish this container and a lot of the other containers because we've got some big things planned. Looking good. And now the train has arrived. Let's get it offloaded. Thursday morning and I'm in the yard. One of our volumetrics is acting up. Sensors, 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 all these new lorries and all these sensors. It's throwing up a fault. So we're plugging in to see which sensor it is this time, which isn't working, which is making the truck malfunction. You saw me talking about the pool house at the refurbishment project and the client saw the previous plan we did, but they wanted more natural light in there so we were trying to increase the size of the skylight and they wanted the gym equipment dropped in so they could actually see how much gym equipment could fit in the area now we've been working on the plan for the past week with the additional roof light it meant that the roof lights were not centralized on the pool so we had to move out the wall and make the pool house slightly bigger so we could move the pool along and we could line it up with the skylight so when you looked at it from the master bedroom and you looked down everything lined up if we tried to move it around when you looked at the top of the roof the skylights wouldn't be centralized and you would have a pool with a very small space on the side where the steam room and sauna are so it made it a little bit bigger which in fact has given more space within the gym also we've dropped in all the gym equipment but the actual footprint of it on the site has got quite a bit bigger but for now this is just to give the client an idea of exactly what it's going to look like and the train is in but before i say let's offload the train you saw yesterday we had a load of sand come in on the train now that sand we're not keeping any of it that's going straight on lorries and being delivered uh, to a company we work with regularly but the sand that comes in today is our sand so we're going to use that we're very low on material so we need to keep the two of them separated give that company their sand and keep the rest for ourselves let's get the train offloaded and hopefully this lorry will start eventually Ugh. correction it's actually a split train full of sand and gravel and we're offloading the gravel first. See in the distance, we have a fuel delivery and I can see the concrete lorry has moved. Not sure how it could be moving already unless we've cleared all the faults. Sometimes if a battery is dead on a lorry and then you jump start, you can get faults on the dash which slow it down, then you clear them and then you're all right. Sometimes, not all the times. You saw in the past the accident system which I put in place, the procedures and the documents which the staff had to fill out. And you've also seen uh, the struggles we've had with putting a plant hire system in. We have a different system for running the lorries and ticketing, which does work well. But every time I find a challenge in a different area of the business and I put a procedure in place, I always have a number of companies saying, yeah, we have a system for that. Everybody wants you to sign up on a monthly basis. When you have multiple systems, there's no guarantee that all of them are gonna integrate with each other. And then I find that there's a complete and utter disconnect between the sales team and the technical team. Because I'm aware of this, I try and mitigate this at Asheville. The sales team, Sam and Darren, they're very close to Tony, Terry, Liam, and everybody tries to work it out together. It means they can look after their customers better and we can serve their needs. But I get it. We are not the largest company in the world. But when we tend to deal with software companies, we got someone selling us everything. It's so great, sign on the dotted line. And then it gets handed over to another department. And that's when it begins to all go wrong. And no matter how many promises they give me, I end up in the same place. And once you sign, there's small print that says, if they don't deliver, they can regain their costs. And then it just gets very unhealthy and messy. Then you end up spending loads of time trying to get out of it. I'm trying to keep things as simple as I can. Because when others get involved, that's when we have problems. By the time you finish with all these monthly subscriptions, you're paying tens of thousands of pounds a month and you're completely reliant on others and their servers and their staff. 
and I'm trying to be the masters of our own destiny. Left the yard to go to a site meeting. There's a large job finishing up and apparently there's loads of bits that may come in handy to Asheville. And you know, I always like to take bits what people are gonna throw away and try to reuse them as much as possible. I'm meant to be in an event with the sticker man at six o'clock and the time is now 3.25. And I do have a shower at work, but I had no time to change. I'm still in my work clothes, but the mucky boots are the biggest problem. And really and truly, when I wear my own clothes, they look very similar to my work clothes. I just like work clothes because uniform gives me stability and it means I don't need to think about what I'm going to wear on a daily basis. And your boy's been nominated for an award at the New Voice Awards. I'm up for best debut presenter, which I'm very thankful for. I have no idea where I'm going. I'm just going to have to try to work this out. I do believe I'm lost. The site was like going on a treasure hunt. I'm one of those guys, you can't leave me in a construction yard. I'll be like, yeah, I'll have some of that. I need some of that. I need one of those. I need one of these. I need one of those. And I took a couple of pictures of everything. I'm going to send them to the boss and let them know the bits in the yard that we would like. It's not brand new. It's used. Some of it looks a little bit beaten up, but it's all good gear. And we like to reuse where we can. At the site, I met a gentleman. I think I know you. Do I know you? Do I know you? Do I know you? And it turns out that we're from the same area. He said to me, this is your firm. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, where do you start with something like this? And we began to have a conversation. I began to, to realize that the, the only thing that's stopping this gentleman from taking a leap was just self-doubt. And he said, but when you start, like, how do you know that? I said, well, well you don't know. Like, but what, what, like, what's the thinking and where's the... I said the starting point is just wherever you decide to start. Sometimes you start in a wrong order. You may try to go four, five, six, and then you need to go back and do one, two, three, but it's learning on the job. Just find a way to make it work. It's an ongoing theme when I meet people. They're talking about everything is about self-doubt. Forgive me, I'm, I'm, I always talk construction. They look at a building and they don't just think to themselves, I could do that. Self-doubt kind of entered my head when I got into the working world, not before it. When I began to see cash flow squeezes and when you're actually trying to win big projects and you're completely new to the industry and you realize that you don't actually know anyone. You have no connections and you have to build everything up yourself. And that's probably one of the first times I admitted it because normally I just keep that deep inside. It's, do you know those ones when you're at home looking at the ceiling thinking, how am I gonna find a way to do this? But you do find a way if you put your mind to it. Some people have started companies in their 50s after working for huge establishments for years and one day they just say, right, I'm just going out on my own. Elon Musk had PayPal, sold it, and you would think to yourself, well, he sold it, he's got all this money, he's a success. What does he do? He takes it all and he goes headfirst into something else. Rockets, electric cars, when everybody said it was mad. Obviously he has his challenges and the bigger your business gets, the bigger your challenges are gonna be, but the mindset is the same. It's just as your company gets bigger, the stakes are higher. And that's my two pence worth on Thursday afternoon, trying to navigate my way through traffic because the sticker man will cry if I'm late. Friday morning, I'm in the yard, and I've got a puncture. I hope it can be repaired. I hope it isn't damaged because these tires are really expensive. I did ask Benji, our tire technician, to fix this puncture for me. Even though my rims are completely scratched up already, he's not confident that he could fix this puncture without damaging the rim. The time is 2.57. The 914 has a... That's what I said. Didn't I say 14.57? Anyway, the grapple attachment, the blades on the end of it are completely worn down to the point where it might start actually damaging uh, the grapple bucket itself. So we have ordered some replacements and we're gonna fit them now.
Saturday. We're in the yard. Terry's got the shades on, looking like Kojak. Looking at the Olympic offices. Click here to watch a video where we collected these and brought them back to the yard a very long time ago. And everyone said, what is he doing collecting more stuff that he's never going to use? Well, the time has come when we're going to start to map these out. They're pretty straightforward format. They're six meters by six meters. And I've decided that this one is going to be my office. What I need to do is draw it out on a piece of paper so we can begin to start the layouts. Because while six meters by six meters might seem like a decent size office, by the time you start to drop in a chair, a desk, a seating area, and I have to take into account where the door is because I'm not going to be moving the door. I'm going to take out this side and I'm going to have glass round all three sides. And before Terry says it, yes, involving myself in things that have got nothing to do with me, which other people could handle while I try to micromanage and add no value whatsoever to what's going on operationally. You wouldn't say that. You would think it, but you wouldn't say it. And then at high level, next to it, we're going to have a boardroom. So each of these are going to need to have a small toilet, kitchenette. Mine will have a shower as well. I'm thinking of some bookshelves. Are you saying, why, why am I doing that? Because I'm not going to put encyclopedias there. And if I do, I'm never going to read them. You didn't think I could read anything? We said, I just look at the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> when you're in the commercial motor, you just say, that's me. <laughs> That's what you need on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Terry didn't think I could read. He thought I just looked at the pictures. There might be a little bit of truth in that. <laughs> boardroom will be next to it. And the boardroom also needs a toilet. It needs a small area to prepare um, refreshments. Once again, bookshelves. But then we do need some wall space for displays we're going to have. Uh, my football shirts aren't going to be on the wall in the boardroom. We may have some artwork, possibly a picture of Terry fishing, but painted like in a kind of Van Gogh sort of way. With your ear cut off. <laughs> <laughs> with a fishing rod, yeah. with no fish on the end of it. <laughs> right. So we're just trying to think about how we're going to lay these out because work will be starting on them in the coming months. And that's it. For Asheville Weekly, episode 176. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see an Asheville video you may not have seen before. And click down here for last week's episode, which was number 175, I think. You were saying you didn't think I could count either. <laughs> we're full of jokes on a Saturday in this yard. It's brilliant. Stop laughing, man.